Hi, good evening. Craig MacDonald from UK Rock Band, The Clan again here for you. And tonight it's another series, another in the series of uh, my little videos, trying to uh, clarify some of the things that us guitarists get up to and um, what we like to do with our equipment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, what we're going to look at tonight is uh, a thing that all the guitarists like, which is effects units. Now, some guitarists tend to use these as an integral part of their sound, such as uh, Robin Trower or The Edge from U2. Other people just use them as um, a little bit of colour or a little bit of variation into the, uh, the sound that they're actually making, which is, to be honest, the way I tend to use it. However, you know, it's everybody's different and, and it's up to you how you do it. What I'm not going to do tonight is I'm not going to explain what the actual effects on this board do. Um, I've got a, the usual kind of things like delays and, and chorus pedals, which you can always check out anywhere else. What this is more to do with is why I've got the board I have got, why it's connected together the way it is connected together, and uh, hopefully that will pass on some information to you which may be of use. So, let's have a little bit of a history lesson first of all. Most of you, I guess, started off buying a, uh, an effects unit in a pedal, something similar to this, and you put it on the floor in front of you. Then you decided you needed another one, and you chained it together with the first one, and so on and so on, and before you knew it, you had four or five pedals in front of you, all eating batteries at an alarming rate, and then you decided to buy a small power supply. But then you got fed up of uh, knocking them all over the stage or all over the floor, so you, you decided to put them on a board, and that's where the pedal board comes from. So it's your collection of effects units, all on one, easy to carry board. Okay, I'm going to take a closer look at my board now. Um, so I'll put the guitar down because I'm not going to play anything for a while. We're just going to have a look at the board. Right, okay. Let's take a closer look at this board. The board itself, uh, it's in a nice flight case. It comes from Swan flight cases. And basically, when they provide you with this, they give you a piece of board in the bottom with some nice carpet on the top so that you can Velcro your units down to it. Now, people fix things down in different ways. People, Some people screw the pedals down. These have got a very strong Velcro underneath. In fact, they're very difficult to uh, move off the carpet. The carpet has slightly moved when the board's been transported because of the weight of some of these pedals, but a few tacks in there aren't going to... You know, it's gonna, that's going to stop that. So the first thing I wanted on my board was a, a good power supply. I've, I've tried several power supplies in the past. And um, this is typical of the, the kind of power supply you might get. Um, it's, it's got a number of outputs on it. Um, I'm not a big fan of these kind of transformer on the wall type things, which I think people tend to call wall warts these days. To me, that seems pretty flimsy, so I wanted something substantial here. I've had a few problems with power supplies. So the one that's in there at the moment is a, a Voodoo Lab Pedal Power 2 Plus. Now, it might just look like, look like a box like the same as this one, but actually that one cost about five to six times more than this one. <laughs> so in my mind, that makes it slightly better. What I do like about this one is the fact that it has a proper mains input cable on it. Um, it's got a number of outputs on it. It's got eight or nine outputs on it. Can't stress that to you too much. Make sure you've got more outputs than you think you're going to need because I can guarantee you now you will add more pedals. Okay? So that's what I've got in there. A Voodoo Lab Pedal Power 2 Plus power supply. Works straight from the mains in the same way, you know, the same lead that your amplifier uses. And it has actually got a, an external connection as well for low-powered, well, it's for 240 volt things, but... I've never used it, but uh, it's there if you need it. So, I've got that on the board in a position central. That's why I put it there, so that 
even spread between the power distribution cables. When you when you start out making your boards, as I said earlier, you tend to just chain your effects units together, um, which is great um, when you start out. Or in fact, it, it, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. But the problem with doing that when you just chain your effects together, so you've got the input of one coming from the output of another, so you may have six or seven pedals all stuck together. Um, there's three three issues with that really. One is the noise because you're increasing the signal path, so you do get more noise in your signal going to your amplifier, um, hums and hisses and that kind of thing. Uh, another another thing I found quite um, disturbing with that was if one of those effects units goes wrong, it's very difficult to actually ascertain which one it is, especially if you're in the middle of a gig or something. You've got seven pedals all plugged into each other. One of them's not working and your whole chain's gone off. You don't know which one it is. So actually, it's not a great idea to set them up that way. And the third thing I found um, doing them that way is that because you're turning them on and off all the time, they need to be positioned so that you can see, well, normally the, the way up you would expect them to be. So that doesn't always help when you're trying to arrange a board. So what the way... I've got round that these days is to use something called a looper. What is the looper? It's this large box here. <laughs> now you can get these in different sizes. What we're effectively doing with this box uh, is we're not having the effects chained one after the other in, in series. What actually happens is the, the input cable from my uh, guitar comes in here, effectively goes along through the looper and comes out here. Okay, so that's under normal circumstances. Now what, what we do then is we have little loops. In fact, I've color code, I tried to color code these so I knew which loop was with which effect. So the, the blue cable, for instance, here comes out, goes through the input of the wah, from the output of the wah, back into the looper. The white ones go out to this distortion, back from the distortion, back into the looper. So if you think about this as a piece of cable, what I actually do when I want my wah wah is I press this button and it brings this blue cable loop into the circuit. When I press this button, it brings this white cable loop into the circuit, which happens to go to the distortion. So I'm effectively switching the effects, the whole effects unit in and out of a circuit at the press of a button. So that has a, a, a few effects. It, it keeps the signal short when they're not in use, if you have a problem with one of your switches, you can basically just turn that particular switch off and isolate it. So it's a lot easier to find any problems if any of your effects units are, are wrong. Um, and the other advantage it has is it means you don't have to have, because all the effects are actually on all the time, you just haven't got them in the circuit. So you don't actually have to have them facing you. You can actually put them upside down on the board if it's more convenient to fit them on the board. Um, so it's a really useful thing. So this seems to be the way that everybody's going these days anyway, and I can understand why. So not the cheapest box in the world, this one, but it has a, a couple of things. This one's got um, six, six loops in it that I'm using. There's also a bypass switch. Now this, uh, this is quite a useful switch. If, if we put bypass on, it doesn't matter if any of the loops are on then, they'll still be bypassed. So in the way that you can with multi-effects processors, you could, if you wanted to, have several effects switched in at once. So if I wanted a bit of delay and a bit of chorus and even a bit of war, I could have all those turned on, but they actually wouldn't come into play until I turned the bypass off. So with the press of one button, I now have three effects switched into the circuit, which saves a lot of tap dancing around on the floor, I can tell you. It's, it's a, I've only got two feet, so it makes it quite difficult if you want to turn three or four things on at once. But using this bypass function, you can actually do that. And then when you've finished your solo or whatever it is you've turned them on for, you just bypass the whole lot again. And then at your leisure, turn them off if, if you don't want them anymore. So that's really useful. The tuner is a typical tuner. Um, when I switch that in, it goes to my boss tuner here. And because there's no return on that, it mutes the whole thing. So I don't get any noise when I'm tuning. Um, boss tuners will let you do that if you want to. You can have it tuning while the, the noise is going through, but I don't like that, so I turn that off. 
So the tuner effectively mutes the whole board. So the loop is a really useful, useful device. Um, it does actually work without the lights, although I'm not quite sure how you do that, but uh, I suppose if, if the power ever failed to it, it would still operate. So again, I would say probably the best thing to do is get a looper with more loops in than you think you're ever going to need, because you will add more pedals. It's the same for the whole board, really. Try and make the board bigger than you think you're going to need, because you will add more pedals. It's just the nature of us guitar players, we do that. So that's effectively the board I've got there and why. So I've got the looper in for the reasons I've mentioned and I've got a really good power supply in there. The only pedal I've got on this board which doesn't use the looper is this one here, which is a Marshall Blues Breaker. Now this pedal you can set up in two different ways. You can have it as a distortion unit if you want, uh, or you can have it as a pure boost. Now I use it in pure boost mode purely for solos. Um, the reason that one's not connected to the looper is because what I found is when I have my amplifier, um, my, my stage set up, I actually have the preamp on my Marshall uh, turned up to 10. <laughs> There's a surprise. <laughs> so actually trying to boost when those preamp valves are running flat out has virtually no effect whatsoever all it does i think from what i've heard is it puts the valves into compression or something but if effectively it doesn't make it any louder so i have a bit of difficulty doing that boosting for solos so the way i actually do it is because my marshall amp has got a, a send and return loop on on the amp and that is in between the preamp and the power amp so I use that send and return loop and I basically boost the preamp signal that's going to the power amp using this little box here. So that is actually got an input from the send of the power amp, of the, the Marshall amp, and the return also goes to the Marshall head. And in that way I can boost in between the two stages of the amplifier. Um, if you don't have your preamp or, or your gain on full volume you'd probably get away with a boost somewhere in the circuit here and it would probably work um, especially if you've got a, a non-valve amp because they they are a lot um, more linear in the way they work most of the effects on this board are, are your standard effects i've got a jim dunlop wah which is probably the most well-known wah wah there is i've got an mxr phaser gives me a very 1970s sound um, don't use it a lot, I just use it maybe for one song because it gets a bit uh, bit much after that really. Chorus, it's a typical, it's, it's the Boss CH1 chorus, which is probably the top chorus pedal there is, top selling one anyway. Um, it does the job. When I'm sort of playing slower or quieter bits of music, I often use a bit of chorus to fill the sound out. And a Boss DD3 digital delay, which does what it says on the tin really, on the can, it's just, Gives me a bit of delay. I don't use it that much, actually. I, I don't really use effects that much because I always work on the idea that if if I have a catastrophic effects failure, I can still play. <laughs> like I say, some guitarists like the Edge, I think, would be a bit stuck, really. But um, it's horses for courses, you know. It depends on what you want. So I hope that's made a bit of sense to you and um, hopefully maybe informed you some things that you didn't already know. And that's pretty much it as far as the pedal board goes. Okay, so I've told you about the board. Here's a little couple of things uh, we talked about um, actually in action here. So if you, if you look at the board now, I don't know whether you can see it, but I've got bypass on, so it's not using any of the loops at all, even though I've actually got three of the loops switched in. So when I'm playing at the moment, we just get no effects at all. When I turn the bypass off, all three of those effects will kick in at the same time. So here we go.
Okay, so uh, hopefully you can see what I mean by that. Um, I'll say it's a pretty good loop as this. It's got some very bright lights. You know exactly where you are. Something else I didn't mention is my Wawa. Although the Wawa itself has a switch on it underneath, I just leave the, the thing turned on all the time and just switch it in with this switch here. So I know exactly where I am. I've had trouble with Wawa's before, not knowing whether they're on or off sometimes because they never seem to put LEDs on them. But uh, in this way, I can just switch it straight in. So, that's the board. Something else I'd like to show you, uh, which might be of interest to you. I use one of these beasts, a Marshall JCM 800. I don't have any trouble with it, it's a very reliable amplifier. But, what happens if you happen to be at a gig and it blows up or something goes wrong and you've lost your tired amplifier sound? Those of you with multi-effects processors, you can probably get away with putting them through the PA system, but I don't like multi-effects processors. I like guitar sounds and, and the odd effects pedal. So, given the cost of these, I'm guessing most of you won't be able to afford to have a spare one of these in the back of the transit. So what do you do? Well, what you can do, and I've just discovered this recently, is you can switch in one of these things. <laughs> Now, before you start uh, saying, oh no, in the most uncertain terms, let me just show you. This is a very, very good value for money little alternative, and it will certainly not going to sound like the Marshall, but it's definitely going to get you through the gig, especially if you mic your speaker up. It's called the Orange Micro Terror. It's a 20 watt amp. Have a listen to this. Oop. <laughs> Okay, all I've done there is I've connected the micro terror to this 4x12 here uh, and plugged my guitar into the front of it. It's got a valve preamp, so you get a bit of a valve sound out of it. It sounds something like this, actually. Right. It doesn't sound like the Marshall. I'm not going to pretend that it does. But what it will do is it'll certainly keep you going through a gig and you won't have to cancel the whole gig. It's actually got pretty versatile controls on the front. One's just the volume control, the other's the gain, and the middle one's a tone. So I'll just uh, I'll just give you a couple of examples with the gain here. This is with the gain on full. <laughs> Okay, it started to get a little bit fizzy, I know, but uh, hey, <laughs> what, what do you expect, you know? <laughs> if you back off the gain a bit. So it gets a little bit meatier there, it's, uh, it's a bit cleaner, obviously. Those of you who like using distortion units, you might be able to stick one of those in front of it and uh, get more of a sound that you're looking for. But remember, this is not designed to be your main gigging amp. This is a get-you-out-of-jail card. You know, it's, it's when your amp's uh, really not going to work and, you, and you, you, you're running around thinking, uh, what am I going to do now? You know, especially if you're miles from home. I say it, a lot of people can't afford to carry a spur one of these with them. So I think this is a pretty good thing to keep in the glove compartment of the Transit, really. And it's so small, it actually fits in the glove compartment of a transit. Um, stick a mic in front of your cab if you need one. Orange Micro Terra. Great little lamp, great spur, and about a tenth of the price of one of these. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much for uh, listening to what I had to tell you there. I hope you found something of use. Um, that was the ins and outs of my pedal board, which I'm uh, now going to put away uh, the way as you know the way I've got it set up it's fairly easy to disconnect um, and basically it comes from Swan flight cases 
as I mentioned earlier, this is a nice little lid for it. I just pull out a couple of leads. The leads can actually go on top of the pedals and the lid just goes on. Once everything's unplugged and it's great to carry away. So thanks a lot and uh, enjoy your pedaling.